Hello, welcome to the visualization class. In this class, we are going to talk about how to create some fundamental visualizations by using Python. Okay, let's first talk about one data example. And let's say we want to uh, start with a real world task. Uh, the background is East High, the high school has a strong focus on ensuring academic success for each student. Recently, the dean wants to improve student performance so that the school can obtain more sponsorships and resources. And the task given to you is, as a data scientist, how can you use data-driven approaches to analyze student performance and provide insight for the, this education organization? So let's talk about this sample of the student and their performance. So the data looks like this. We have several columns and a lot of rows. So this is just a piece of the data set. So we have a columns that represent the variables. The variable include gender, identity, parental education, launch test preparation course, math score, reading score, and writing score. So each Raw represent a student characteristics and their performance. Okay, so by taking a look at this data set, we notice that this data set contains some categorical variable and numeric variables. The categorical variables include gender, identity, parental education, lunch, and the test preparation course, because all of these variables are represented as labels, right? And we also have those numeric variables, and the numeric variables in this example represent their academic performance, and that include math score, reading score, and writing score. Okay, so the task is we're going to analyze this data set. So let's take a look at the tasks. First, we want to analyze some categorical variables. The categorical variables including from gender all the way to the test preparation course, right? And in order to visualize those categorical variables, we can use bar chart and pie chart. So the bar chart, we use a coordinate system. We have axis, we have x axis and y axis. The x axis represent the labels, and the y axis represent how many accounts they have. And if we, if we want to focus on the proportion of these labels, such as the gender, we can use a pie chart because a pie chart, each slice of the pie can represent the proportions. Okay, so let's you know, let's go to the Python and we are going to learn how to use Python to create bar chart and the pie chart. So I'm going to stop here here and go to a web browser. So this is a web browser. Go to the uh, website and Google search the Colab. So this Google Colab is an online version of Python editor. So cl click this uh, Google Colab and you're going to create this new notebook. Okay, so this is where you're going to write your Python code and uh, execute your Python code and get the result. So this is the uh, uh, Python, uh, uh, Python file and in here you can change the name. For example, I can change that as exercise uh, exercise two, okay, and then this uh, is the place you can uh, write the Python code, and uh, uh, we can change that to a text. Once I change that to a text, you can just uh, type any uh, text in that. For example, this is our first exercise, and then you. Um, Click Shift to return all together so we can see we can embed the text content into this uh, notebook. Uh, remember, if you want to add that another line, you can just move your cursor to the central area. You can change. You can choose either code and the text. In this, I change. I uh, in this previous exercise, we uh, learn how to uh, add the text in the box. However, if I want to uh, click this code mode, such as this, you can type those Python code. 
Okay, so th this is just an example. If you just want to delete this line, all you want to do is to move your cursor and click this delete button. Okay, so this is where we uh, uh, type the Python code. Okay, first we're going to import some libraries, and these libraries help us to uh, do some visualization. This is the, uh, the this library is a collection of all the functions that help us to complete the visualization task. So first we're going to import Seaborn. This is the Python library help us to create some visualizations and uh, import Seaborn as as SNS. And this SNS is short for the Seaborn. And another uh, visualization library is uh, matplotlib. So from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. So this is uh, this plt and this SNS is other libraries for us to create visualizations and uh, because this task we're going to analyze a specific ta uh, specific uh, data set we also need to upload the data set into this python uh, notebook so we're going to use import pandas as pd so this pandas is the think about as the uh, data manipulation tools so this help us to uh, upload the data set, read the data set, and uh, do some fundamental and uh, do some fundamental manipulation. And the first two rows represent the um, visualization too. So remember that those three code should be uh, in separated rows. Okay, they are independent. So let's run the code. In order to run the code, you're going to click this play button in front of it, or you can click the shift return button all, all together. Okay, now after you execute this code, you can see there is a small a green mark in front of it, and that represents all this code are successfully uh, executed. Okay, next, I want to import the data to this digital platform. And uh, uh, because we want to analyze this uh, data set, we first need to bring this data set to the Python. Okay, so in order to do that, I will move my cursor to this file folder icon. Okay, once I click this icon, you can see we are in this file folder path. So this is sample data. So uh, this is not a place, this is not the right place. So in order to do that, we cl further click this upward sign of this uh, file folder icon click this and you're going to see that we have a lot of system files file folders do not touch any of them so find the content and then click this three dot within this content label and then click upload so i'm going to upload the file we want to analyze so this is a student.csv. So open it and then click OK. So right now, if I further click this content, okay, now you can see that the student.csv, this target data site is under the content folder. Okay, so you have to make sure that this student.csv is under the content folder. In uh, by doing this, we do not have to make uh, uh, we do not have to specify the data set, data set path. So after we upload the data into the Python um, system file folder, and we can read that data to the Python. So first, I'm going to define a DF. This is called uh, a data frame variable, and DF equal to pd.readcsv. So let me introduce this function. So read CSV help us read a certain type of data. Since our data is a CSV format, so we're going to use a pd.csv. And the pd, remember we said that before, pd is a library help us to load the data set and do some fundamental analysis and the manipulation to that data. 
So we're going to read the data first. And uh, let's type the target data. We're going to analyze a pound, and that is a student.csv. And there's a second row, another row to start a new code. We're going to read the data. So uh, we're going to show the data. So first is how we read the data, and then we're going to show the data. In order to show the data, we're going to use a head function. And that head function is attached to the variable data frame we just created. So by using this head function, we are going to show the first five rows of the data set. So let's run the code. OK, now you can see that I successfully read the data set and let Python to print the first five rows of the data set. Now I, I can close this up. And then you can see this is our data set, right? So the first row is a student, and she's a female, group B, and uh, her parental education is a bachelor degree all the way and uh, to the last column. So this is our data. So let's first take a look at what is the data size, what is the sample size of the data. In order to do that, we're going to use a len function. And then inside the len function, we're going to put the df. This is the variable we just created. And think about this df as a variable that holds the entire data set. And len df will uh, uh, let Python to give us what is the sample size. So after I run this data set, uh, after I run this code, you can see that the length of the DF is 1000. That means we have 1000 uh, students in this data set. Okay, now let's go back to the uh, question. The question asks, uh, first we're going to create a bar chart to create to display the distribution of gender, ethnicity, etc. Okay, in order to create a bar chart for a certain type of column, and we're going to, we're going to show that uh, the distribution or counts of each individual label, we're going to use a function called count, count plot. So this counterplot is in the Seaborn library. So we're going to type SNS. Remember that SNS is short for the Seaborn, right? And dot and type count plot. OK, so this is a function. When you type that, you can see that a function it will automatically pop up. So this counterplot help us to create a bar chart. And these each bar represent occurrence of each a unique label. So the first we're going to um, put some uh, arguments. And the first is data, data equal to df. That means we're going to let Python know what is the data set I should analyze upon. So this is a df. And the data equal, equals that is an argument. And the second argument is which column I should analyze. So this is a target data. And next, we're going to specify which is a column. So let's say I want to uh, take a look at what is the distribution of gender. So what I'm going to do is to type x equal to gender. And what does this x represent? This x represents the x-axis. So counterplot uh, basically create a two-dimensional coordinate system. And you have to make sure what is the axis and what is the y axis. So automatically, the axis, uh, the y axis will be the counts. And you have to make, uh, make sure what is your axis, x axis is. So let's say if we want to take a look at the gender distribution, I'm going to put the x equal to gender. And further, you will see what that creates. OK, that is all we need to create the bar chart for the variable gender. And then we will say plt, uh, plt dot show to display the result. So by using these two lines of the code in separated rows, we can use Python to create a bar chart. So let's take a look at the result. So what I'm going to do is to run this code. Now you can see we create a two-dimensional uh, 
coordinate system, right? So x axis represent gender. This is what we exactly say in the function, right? The so x axis equal to gender, and gender have two labels, female and male. And the y axis represent the counts, right? So uh, let uh, from this example, we can see that the female has a um, female student um, is more right than a male student so this is how we use counterplot to create the bar chart and showing the distribution of gender and next we want to create a bar chart to uh, show the distribution of the identity okay let's say i want to take a look at what is the distribution of identity so that's very similar with the previous one so we're going to say sns dot count uh, plot and the first argument is data data equal to df the, the, that means what the target data set we're going to analyze upon is df and the x axis we're going to put the identity instead of gender right so i copy this and paste on here and that is where we're going to show the distribution of identity and next, I'm going to say plt dot show and run the code. Now you can see this is the bar chart and showing the distribution of identity. Okay. And another example I want to show you is a parental education. Okay. That's very similar with this. So we're going to uh, say sns dot count, count plot data equal to df. And the x axis equal to parental education, PL, plt dot show. Okay, so this is the chart that showing the parental distribution. Uh, parental shows the distribution of parental education. However, this is not correct, right? So one thing that made me concern is take a look at those. Uh, labels. So those labels are very long name and they are overlapping to each other and so that we cannot see which one represent which. So this need to be updated. In order to solve this issue, in order to make sure that each label are clearly displayed in the panel, what we're going to do is to use uh, another line of code to make a justification. So in the second line of code, I want to add another uh, code that is plt dot x ticks, and this x ticks will help us to adjust the x axis. And in the x ticks function, I'm gonna say rotation equal to twenty. So that means we're going to rotate the label's name so that they will no longer be horizontal and to avoid the overlapping issue. So let's uh, run these three lines of the code. Okay, now you can see that now the x-axis, each label will be rotated a little bit so that they won't be overlapping to each other. And now you can see which bar represent which label and how many accounts it hold. So okay, that is for the bar chart. Thank you for watching.